Welcome then to the Indoor Tower Garden Masterclass. Now, before we get into this, I have some resources that I wanna give you. I already have a Tower Garden Masterclass that goes over everything you need to know about tower gardening in general. Also, I already have an Indoor Hydroponics Masterclass that goes over everything you need about indoor hydroponics. And I have free guides and paid more extensive guides that go along with both of those masterclasses. Also, don't forget, if you're in the market for a tower garden, use the link in my description box and you'll receive Master Your Tower Garden, the 14-part tower garden course for free. Another great resource for you would be the School of Hydroponics Live and Evolving Community. This is the community attached to Humble Growth Hydroponics. All right, so now that we've mentioned all the extra resources, all the extra places that you can go and keep evolving and growing with your tower garden, let's get on to the master class. So really when it comes to indoor tower gardening, there are three all new main considerations that we need to put into play here. The first one is lighting. We're gonna be handling the lighting ourselves and there are definitely some big questions we need to ask ourselves, but we'll get back to that. Secondly, moving air. Do we have fresh moving air around our tower garden, not just blowing the stale out, air out and helping our stems get stronger, but also bringing fresh CO2 in? And number three, nutrients. This is another area where you're gonna to have to ask yourself some questions about the plants you're growing. And I guess that's the first thing that I wanna get into. When you bring your plants inside, now this is true for soil gardening or for tower gardens, the big question that you have to ask yourself is, am I gonna be growing plants that I eat the least from? Or am I gonna be growing plants that I grow fruit from? Because that question, the answer to that question more specifically, will determine a lot moving forward. Forever veg plants, plants that you just pick the leaf and eat the leaf from are incredibly easy. You don't really have to do much at all. You can use your tower garden lights that you get from tower garden. Um, you can use your tower garden nutrients that you get from tower garden. Set everything up as the manufacturer recommends. Just sit back, watch it all grow. And as long as you can read the instructions and set up the garden the way that it says with the timers, you should just be able to sit back. Um, you might not even have to top off your reservoir because leafy greens actually just grow really fast. And once they're done growing, you pull them out of your garden and then you can reset it. And they don't use a ton of water. So if you're just growing herbs and leafy greens, then you really can just follow the manufacturer's recommendations. You really can just use the tower garden lights and you're good to go. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys later. Okay, now for the rest of you who wanna grow fruiting plants, there's a lot you're gonna to have to learn. And let's start with the lighting. Now, first off, unfortunately, Tower Garden's light just doesn't deliver what fruiting plants need. So this creates a problem for a lot of people. Uh, and sometimes people will try to put their Tower Gardens in a window to get more light naturally, uh, but that can actually end up creating even more problems because it can throw the light cycle off and then your plant won't actually know if it's supposed to be creating fruit or if it should just make it flat, make its flowers and die, bolt. The real solution is twofold. The first thing you need to do when we move our plants inside and we start taking over the lighting ourselves is we need to get a PAR meter. This stands for photosynthetically active radiation. Now PAR meters measure light. I use this PAR meter, I'll link it up in the description box. I also have this video right here to explain exactly how to use it. And this will tell you the lighting that your plant needs throughout every stage of its growth. Without a PAR meter, we're just kind of shooting in the dark. We have no idea exactly how much light our plant's getting, if it's getting the adequate amount of lighting, if it's too much lighting. So a PAR meter really is a place to start when we move our tower garden inside and we wanna start growing fruiting plants. And what the PAR meter is gonna tell you pretty quickly, you'll realize, is that the lights that are on your tower garden, if you just got the tower garden lights, are not gonna be adequate. They're not gonna produce enough PAR, enough PPFD is actually the acronym. That stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density, and that's the actual power of light. Think about it like measuring wattage, right? So you measure watts, which is the power of electricity, um, in the same way that PPFD is the power of PAR. That might have been a, a crude explanation, but I hope it made sense to you. The other number on our PAR meter that we wanna look at is the DLI. This stands for the Daily Light Integral. This actually, I find to be the easiest way to set my light overall. Uh, I just look at what the DLI is supposed to be and I make sure that's where my DLI is set just by adjusting it on my PAR meter to what my lighting is set to. And then that tells me if my plant's getting enough light overall. 
Now the way to add more light, these are great full spectrum Barina lights that lean a little more towards red wavelengths, which when you have fruiting plants, you want more red light actually, because red light encourages more photosynthetic growth. It encourages more uh, fruiting development. So once we have all lights around our garden ready to give our plants what they need for the flowering and fruiting stage, we can then measure the light and see the distance that we need to move these closer or further away to the plant to give them more or less par. And that's something we would determine with the par meter. If you do not do this, I'm not going to say that your plants won't fruit. They'll likely grow flowers and some of them might start to grow fruit and they might even grow fruit. But what you'll be seeing there is kind of a bit of a uh, ignorance is bliss scenario because you'll see, you know, one or two peppers come in and you'll, and you'll be so excited to, to have grown peppers inside and that's really cool and that's great. But one or two peppers on a tower garden is an extremely light harvest. You could have 30 or 40 peppers. You should actually expect at least twice as much of a harvest from your tower garden as you expected in soil. But only if you optimize the lighting, the nutrients, and the air. And that's what we're going to get into more throughout this video. Because aeroponics does such a great job with the roots, giving them exactly what they need, the plant's going to be really hungry for everything else up top too. So if we don't give it the appropriate amount of lighting, then it's going to be a weak harvest. Okay, so now let's talk about the air. Why is it so important to make sure that we have air moving around our plant? Well, first off, this can just be done by introducing a few oscillating fans around the garden. You know, a nice strong uh, ceiling fan just to keep air moving throughout the garden, just to keep fresh air moving in and old stale air moving out, while also presenting a little bit of a breeze uh, throughout our plants. Now the breeze through the plants does two things. That strengthens the plants because if they don't grow against a breeze then a lot of times they can grow up really lanky and this can be even more of a problem in a tower garden where they're growing kind of at an angle because the second that it curves the whole plant's going to go down because the top is going to weigh more and it's just not going to be strong enough to hold itself up. So we have to make sure our plants in our tower gardens are exceptionally strong. One way we can do that aside from proper lighting because Improper lighting will cause them to run and they'll be leggy. That's the best way that you can actually make sure that your plants are nice and strong is to make sure that we're measuring that par and giving them the proper lighting. Uh, the second best way is through moving air. Uh, this is because we're trying to encourage transpiration. Transpiration is the pool of nutrients up through the roots, the delivery of the nutrients to where they're going um, throughout the entire plant, as well as the exit of old stale uh, water vapor and the byproduct of separating carbon from carbon dioxide, oxygen, all come out through the bottom of the leaf. Now, Without them coming out through the bottom of the leaf, through the stomata, the little pores in the leaf, that's where the oxygen and the water vapor all come out and the fresh CO2 goes in. Without that happening properly, the plant won't photosynthesize. That will halt photosynthesis altogether. It'll also create a lot of problems with the leaf itself. They'll shrivel up and they'll die. It's important to make sure we're moving the old air out, the exhaust, so to speak. So as the plant is uh, releasing the old water vapor and the old oxygen, we're, we're pulling that out of the plant, so to speak. And by moving the air through the plant, that's actually creating something called the transpiration pool, which pulls the water nutrients from the roots up to the leaves and out. There's an actual energy, a pull through the plant that's created from the release on the leaves. So if we don't have moving air, clearing out the stomata to allow the plant to transpire, that will create dead plants faster than anything else will in an indoor garden. So it's important to make sure that we just have a gentle breeze from, like I said, some oscillating fans or even just a really strong uh, ceiling fan. Or if you live somewhere where it's not freezing and you can open a window and just have a gentle breeze come in, that's really helpful. Stale air will kill indoor plants extremely fast. Transpiration is really important, so check out this video if you want to learn more about transpiration. In fact, I have a ton of videos here on Humble Growth Hydroponics, and I have a ton of free guides at HumbleGrowthHydroponics.com to get you started. So make sure you go through all of this stuff too, and you'll be a hydroponics master before you know it. Okay, so we've discussed indoor lighting and what you need to know to master that. We've discussed uh, transpiration, airflow, why it's so important, and what you can do to make sure we have air moving through our garden. Now the last one, nutrients. 
If you were just growing vegetative plants and you weren't growing fruiting plants, you could just stick with the exact same nutrients and just raise the EC or the volume of nutrients um, throughout the grow and you would never have to make any adjustments to what actual nutrients are going in your garden. But we're talking about fruiting plants now. I think all the vegetative people left a long time ago. So first off, let me get this out of the way. I use General Hydroponics Flora Series because you can't deliver um, the proper nutrients to, to flowering and fruiting plants using uh, Tower Gardens nutrients. They are really just for vegetative growth. The problem really comes down to a high nitrogen imbalance that you would see when you get to the flowering stage because your plants need nitrogen for leafy growth. So without nitrogen, your plant can't produce chlorophyll, it won't be green, uh, and it won't have that photosynthetic growth. So nitrogen is really key and it's really important when your plant is getting bushy and big during the vegetative stage. So plants that stay in the forever veg that never fruit, they just can just take, take nitrogen their entire life and be happy with that. But we're talking about hydroponic garden where we only have a set amount of nutrients that we can have in our garden. And when we get to flowering and fruiting, we need to make sure we have a lot more phosphorus, a lot more potassium, a lot more magnesium, a lot more calcium, uh, a lot more of these big nutrients that are gonna fill out the EC really quickly. And we don't wanna have nitrogen anymore, actually. We wanna get rid of the nitrogen at that point. Towards the flowering stage, you actually want to usually flush nitrogen from your plant because it can affect the overall taste. This is why it's important to use a three-part nutrient solution where we can cater the nutrients to our plants need during the vegetative stage by focusing on more nitrogen. And then whenever they get into the flowering stage, we can focus more on the potassium and the phosphorus and lean back off the nitrogen. This is the real benefit of using a three-part nutrient solution, and it's essential if you're growing fruiting plants. Now, the same thing is true with the nutrients. If you use Tower Gardens nutrients, you can grow fruiting plants. And you might see them and be like, wow, yay, I have tomatoes and peppers and jalapenos, but um, you won't have nearly the quality and you won't have nearly the quantity that you could have if you would have tuned your nutrients to exactly what they needed for each stage. And there's actually these grow charts. And I have these linked up over at Humble Growth Hydroponics. These grow charts show you exactly what to put in through every stage of growth, which make it really handy, kind of foolproof, uh, pretty easy. And then there's one more really, really super important thing that you need to manage your nutrients, and that is an EC meter. Now, if you're wondering how do I measure and manage my nutrients, I talk about this in all my other videos, all my other masterclasses, but make sure you have an EC or TDS meter. Um, that's to measure the electrical conductivity or the total dissolved solids in your water. That'll tell you the amount of nutrients in your water. I have my personal favorites linked up, but you can go get whichever one you like and also pick up a pH meter too, because setting your pH in your garden is the number one most important thing that you can do to unlock your nutrients for your plants. Your pH actually directly unlocks the nutrients for your plants. So if it's off, if your pH isn't set properly, but the nutrients are actually right there in your water, the plant still won't take them. Uh, and it'll look like it has a nutrient deficiency even though the nutrients are in the water because the pH is off. So setting our pH is really, really important. It's actually the number one thing that I do. It's the first thing that I do if I notice a deficiency. Check out this video here about nutrient deficiencies. And let's recap. For lighting, we need more light. We need these, these warmer lights around our tower garden as well as the tower garden lights. We also need plenty of moving air to encourage transpiration, to encourage our stems to be stronger to move the old stale air out and bring fresh new carbon dioxide in. We also need to cater our nutrients. We can follow these nutrient charts and use a three-part nutrient solution to taper off the nitrogen and give our plants more of the phosphorus and potassium that they're gonna need to produce their fruit. And if you are like a lot of people right now, moving your gardens inside, beginning to start your indoor hydroponic gardening journey, then I encourage you to check out humblegrowthhydroponics.com. You'll find all of my free guides over there. Below the guides, you'll also find Master Your Tower Garden, my complete 14 part tower garden mastery course, as well as the School of Hydroponics, where you will master indoor hydroponics, lighting, full control growth environments. You will learn how to turn your home into an oasis of food for you and your loved ones. So make sure you check out humblegrowthhydroponics.com and until the next video, let's grow together.